America, we've been examining some of the claims made by ABC News on their 2020 special, Islam Questions and Answers. We've seen that ABC was wrong when they suggested that radical Muslims are our first line of defense against terrorism. They were wrong when they said that the Quran teaches that Muslims will get raisins, not virgins, in paradise. They were wrong when they told us that Adam and Eve were created equally from dust, according to Islam. And they were wrong when they said that men and women have equal rights and responsibilities in Islam. Fortunately, we're now turning to an issue that even ABC News can't get wrong. Muhammad's intolerance towards non-Muslims. ABC messed everything else up, but let's face it, a drugged monkey could figure this one out. So, I guess I'll just sit back and drink a cup of tea while ABC World News anchor Diane Sawyer does what she does best and uses her journalistic expertise to expose Muhammad's clear commands to oppress and subjugate unbelievers. Let him have it, Diane. And Muhammad said that we should all be tolerant of each other's religion. What in the lowest pit of Hades did you just say? And Muhammad said that we should all be tolerant of each other's religion. Our differences are God's mercy. Our differences are God's mercy? You're telling us that Muhammad said these words. I wonder if the clip will make more sense if I play it backwards. <laughs> As you can see, I'm totally flabbergasted. Diane Sawyer made two distinct claims. First, Muhammad promoted tolerance towards people of different religions. Second, Muhammad said that our religious differences are a mercy from God. So, ABC News is telling us that Islam is tolerant. We could just take ABC's word for it, but let's do something crazy. Let's make sure our views actually correspond to reality. Did Muhammad promote tolerance towards unbelievers? I guess this would be a good time to ask a few obvious questions. For instance, when Muhammad started preaching Islam, how many pagans were in Mecca? A lot. How many pagans were in Mecca when Muhammad died two decades later? None. So what happened? Did Muhammad's religious tolerance eradicate paganism from Mecca? When Muhammad conquered Mecca, the Kaaba was surrounded by hundreds of idols that were very dear to the people of Arabia. What happened to all of those idols? They were smashed to pieces by the ever-so-tolerant prophet of Islam. How many Jews were in Medina when Muhammad moved there? Three large tribes. How many Jews were in Medina after eight years of Muhammad's leadership? Zero tribes. Interesting, Muhammad's religious tolerance has a way of obliterating all other religions. And Muhammad said that we should all be tolerant of each other's religion. Our differences are God's mercy. Here's a little-known fact. According to Muslim sources, the pagans, the idol-worshipping polytheists of Mecca, were far more tolerant than the Muslims. Consider this passage from At-Tabari's history, which refers to Muhammad's early preaching in Mecca. The Messenger of God proclaimed God's message openly and declared Islam publicly to his tribesmen. When he did so, they did not withdraw from him or reject him in any way, as far as I have heard, until he spoke of their gods and denounced them. Notice that the Meccans had no objections to Muhammad peacefully preaching Islam. It was only after the tolerant of all religions, Muhammad started viciously attacking the beliefs of the Meccans, that disputes began to arise. A few pages later, in Atabari, we find that Muhammad was harassing the Meccans by mocking their gods and their values. One day the Meccans were discussing Muhammad and they said, We have never seen the like of what we have endured from this man. He has derided our traditional values, abused our forefathers, reviled our religion, caused division among us, and insulted our gods. We have endured a great deal from him. As they continued talking about Muhammad, he came up and said, here, men of Quraysh, by him in whose hand Muhammad's soul rests, I have brought you slaughter. Sounds like a threat. Muslims often complain about the intolerance of the pagans in Mecca. But don't ever forget that Muhammad preached in Mecca for more than a decade, and he made it out alive. 
after years of criticizing the religious beliefs of the people there, and even after threatening to slaughter them. Would I survive for ten years in Mecca today if I stood in the streets and mocked the religious beliefs of the people who live there? Would I last ten days? Ten minutes? We'll never know because thanks to Muhammad's teachings, non-Muslims aren't even allowed in the city. And Muhammad said that we should all be tolerant of each other's religion. And Muhammad said that we should all be tolerant of each other's religion. And Muhammad said that we should all be tolerant of each other's religion. And Muhammad said that we should all be tolerant of each other's religion. So the pagans were far more tolerant of Muhammad and his followers. But that's the pagans. Islam has a higher view of Christians and Jews. We have to keep in mind, however, that according to Islam, there's a world of difference between Muslims on the one hand and Christians and Jews on the other. While Muslims are the greatest people in the world, Christians and Jews are the worst of creatures. The Quran declares in Surah 3, verse 110, Ye are the best of peoples, Muslims are the best of peoples, evolved for mankind, enjoining what is right, forbidding what is wrong, and believing in God. Who are the best people in the world? Muslims. And in Surah 98, 6 we read, Verily, those who disbelieve in the religion of Islam, the Quran, and Prophet Muhammad, from among the people of the scripture, Jews and Christians, and al-Mushrikun will abide in the fire of hell. They are the worst of creatures. Now, if we're the worst of creatures, and Muslims are the best people in the world, don't you think this might put an obstacle in the way of Muslims seeking genuine friendships with non-Muslims? Especially when the Quran says things like, O oh, you who believe, do not take the Jews and the Christians for friends. They are friends of each other. And whoever amongst you takes them for a friend, then surely he is one of them. But it gets worse. Christians and Jews are so bad, Muslims are actually commanded to fight us simply because of our beliefs. Surah 921 commands Muslims to fight those who believe not in Allah. What's that? Fight those who attack you first? No. Fight those who believe not in Allah, nor the last day, nor hold that forbidden which hath been forbidden by Allah and his messenger, nor acknowledge the religion of truth from among the people of the book, that's Jews and Christians, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. Muslims are commanded to fight us because of our beliefs until we pay them off. If that's not clear enough, we can always turn to Muhammad's words in Sahih Muslim. The Messenger of Allah said, I have been commanded to fight against people till they testify that there is no God but Allah, that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, and they establish prayer and pay zakat. What's that, Muhammad? You've been commanded to fight people only in self-defense? No, you've been commanded to fight people until they become Muslims. And this is exactly what we find in the Quran. O oh, Prophet, strive hard against the unbelievers and the hypocrites, and be unyielding to them, and their abode is hell, and evil is the destination. O oh, you who believe, fight those of the unbelievers who are near to you, and let them find in you hardness. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and those who are with him are severe against disbelievers, and merciful among themselves. Surely Allah has bought of the believers their persons and their property for this, that they shall have the garden. Well, since Allah has done all this for Muslims, what are they supposed to do in return? They fight in Allah's way, so they slay and are slain. And Muhammad said that we should all be tolerant of each other's religion. So, Muhammad harassed the pagans for years. He derided their values, abused their forefathers, reviled their religion, caused division among them, and insulted their gods. That's what he did when he didn't have an army. When he was strong enough, Muhammad conquered Mecca, took over their temple, smashed their idols, and eventually issued the command to slay them wherever you find them. As for Christians and Jews, they're the worst of creatures, while Muslims are the best of peoples. Muslims can't be friends with Jews and Christians. Muslims are commanded to fight and subjugate Jews and Christians because of our beliefs. And Muslims are merciful among themselves, but severe against who? Unbelievers. But don't forget that Diane Sawyer did give us a piece of evidence to show that Muhammad preached tolerance. I've given you numerous quotations directly from the Quran and other trusted Muslim sources. What does Diane give us? 
Our differences are God's mercy. Our differences are God's mercy. Our differences are God's mercy. According to Diane Sawyer, we know that Muhammad preached tolerance towards all religions because he said that our differences are God's mercy. With this, ABC News may get the 2010 Golden Medallion for mind-bogglingly ridiculous scripture twisting. What did Muhammad actually say? I should probably point out that according to most Muslims, we don't know, since the various versions of the quotation are classified as da'if, weak hadith that can't be trusted. Most Muslims reject weak hadith. Some scholars even say that the quotation doesn't go back to Muhammad at all. It goes back to a later Muslim. But I'm not crazy about the Muslim methodology, so let's grant ABC News their weak hadith. What does it actually say? Does it command Muslims to be tolerant towards everyone because different religious beliefs are God's mercy? No, it says, The difference of opinions of my companions is a mercy for my ummah. The ummah is the community of Muslims. Is there anything in this quotation about being tolerant towards other religions? Absolutely not. In fact, Muslim commentators are quite clear that this narration isn't even about Muslim doctrine, which they believe is set in stone. Instead, it has to do with certain differences of opinion concerning minor Muslim practices, the sorts of differences you'll find among the four schools of Islamic jurisprudence in Sunni Islam. The idea, according to Muslim scholars, is that if there were no differences of opinion among Muhammad's companions, any little mistake a Muslim made would classify him as an unbeliever. Therefore, it's good that there are differences of opinion when it comes to the little things. You can do some different things and not worry about accidentally apostatizing and having your head chopped off. That's why these differences are a mercy from Allah. But what does Diane Sawyer do with the passage? She doesn't give us the actual quotation, so we can't see what Muhammad really said. She doesn't give us the reference, so we can't even look it up. She totally twists the meaning from differences of opinion among Muhammad's companions are okay to differences among religions are okay. And she completely ignores all of the clear passages where Muhammad commands his followers to fight, subjugate, and even kill non-Muslims simply because they're non-Muslims. This is how ABC News convinces Western viewers that Muhammad was tolerant and peaceful. And Muhammad said that we should all be tolerant of each other's religion. Our differences are God's mercy. Now, given what we've seen in our past several videos, I have to ask ABC an important question. If you can only defend this religion by twisting the facts and inventing things and ignoring everything that even remotely resembles careful scholarship, if you can only make Islam seem compatible with Western values by misrepresentation and distortion and outright deception, doesn't this tell us something about Islam? If Islam really were the force of freedom and equality and tolerance that ABC News wants us to believe it is, wouldn't Diane Sawyer be able to open the Quran and the Hadith and prove her claims by accurately presenting us with the teachings of Islam? Shame on you, ABC. You've insulted your viewers, you've insulted our intelligence, and you've insulted centuries of victims of Muslim intolerance. Instead of drawing attention to the source of violence and oppression, you cover it up. You even praise it. And I'd say this makes you partially responsible for the blood of future victims of Islamic terror. We've been putting up with this for far too long, and I think I speak for millions of Americans when I say, enough already.